I guess a long book gets a long review. <laughs> um, this is a continuation of my Game of Thrones review. Hopefully this will be the last one. Uh, individual influence on NPCs is stronger than influence over groups. So if uh, two politicians are going at each other and one has influence on a group, they get a negative 10 if they're going up against someone who has an influence on an NPC. Um, might not come up a lot. Probably in the Game of Thrones style play would come up more. Uh, there's opposed influence checks, which are D20 plus your influence bonus on the person or group, your charisma modifier plus up to half of your reputation if appropriate, plus other modifiers, and that's a burst, a D20 plus sense motive plus wisdom modifier plus half of the reputation of, uh, if appropriate plus other. So basically, you know, it's one person going up against another using influence. A passive influence check is a DC set by the GM, and the degree of success. Uh, there's a table for influence checks. It's actually pretty impressive. I was kind of I thought that was pretty neat. Um, there's a section on influence and social skills and how they kind of relate. Influence does not replace social skills, but influence is more powerful. Um, Basically, it goes into more detail about influence and how it works. Um, there's negatives like uh, if you have any oaths by NPCs, you get a plus five bonus. If there's some newly upjumped nobles that used to be knights or some, something, they have a negative two penalty because they're not used to politics. Uh, you can attempt to sway other NPCs uh, influenced to your side. And they, the, the other person gets their influence points back. It's more in a Game of Thrones style game. Um, there's a list of the, some sample influence checks. And then there was this quote that I thought was interesting. This game provides the opportunity to face monsters that are quite human and are more likely to kill you through subterfuge and betrayal than by direct combat. It's on page 291. I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, it discussed parts of the setting, social class, uh, children maturing quicker, legitimacy, bastards. Uh, knights are rarely as good as they are in the stories, as Sansa finds out in the books. It goes into religions and superstitions, uh, sexism and gender roles, um, suggestions for backgrounds and classes. And then it gives a list of possible motivations to try to use your, in your character when you're role-playing. Like acceptance, destiny, duty, escape, family, obligation, love, power, spite, survival, uh, transformation, etc. And uh, chapter 13 starts off and it gets into more depth about the three main play styles. And that's the Noble House, the Game of Thrones, and the Band of Heroes. Um, there's some interesting player advice that I want to read to you. If you're a player and you're going to be playing in a Game of Thrones game, uh, these are the suggestions. Obviously read the books, the, the novels by George R.R. R. Martin. Create characters that fit the world and give your character a few defects because those are fun. Imitate but do not duplicate characters from the books. Uh, unless you're actually just using the NPCs at the back because you want to skip all this character generation stuff. Um, establish a character voice. I like to talk in funny voices. It's a lot of fun. Try to uh, use team play versus solo play. And try to incorporate the other characters because no one likes to just have someone that hogs all the spotlight. <clears throat> Don't get too caught up in the rules and have fun. Don't think take things too personally. Bad things happen, especially in Westeros. Trust the GM. Hopefully they are worthy of that trust. Uh, it should be really fun for everyone. Uh, the GM's put a lot of effort, uh, especially with this very detailed setting. If I was going to run a Game of Thrones using these systems and this rule, I'd probably read this book two or three more times. <laughs> Um, provide constructive feedback. Keep communication open between the GM and the player. 
Feel free to discuss problems, but try to state your case in a calm manner. Uh, you know, GMs and players can sometimes get into arguments about how things are ruled or what happens. But uh, like I said, try to have fun and you know, try to get along. Chapter 14 is GMing the Seven Kingdoms. The Seven Kingdoms or Westeros can be very dark and gritty. Uh, try to make sure the consequences for actions are there rather than alignment. I really didn't see anything about alignment in the book, which is kind of interesting. Uh, try to make sure realism is part of the game. Time is a precious commodity and combat is deadly. Quick communication doesn't exist. There's lots of details. Um, settings lawyers, like setting lawyers could be a help or they could be annoying. Um, try to basically let them help you. And hopefully if you're a player that knows a lot about the setting, help your GM out. Try to know the setting very well. Read the novels, know the rules, read them a couple times. Um, there's a list of campaign, si campaign seeds for the three different play styles. There's sample rules to focus more on story, uh, basically by rolling dice less. Uh, when a character knowledge is greater than the player, give them hints. When uh, the outcome of mundane action is not contested, assume success. There's, uh, and again, these are all optional. If there's a more difficult, uncontested action, but they're well practiced at it, if there's success. Uh, PC versus NPC of significantly lesser ability, success. Again, basically just the story trumps the rules in certain instances. There's an advice summary for GM. Read the book several times. Read the rule book, take notes, uh, get familiar with them. Define what elements of the setting will be in the campaign. Guide character creation for your players. And see what they want to play. Uh, have a campaign timeline of things that happen regardless of what the characters do. You know, for stuff in the background, uh, kingdoms going to war, etc. Be open-minded to player input and character actions. It is their game too, not just yours. Don't railroad them. Let them deal with the consequences of their actions and the consequences of uh, NPCs as well. Get feedback from the players. Maintain trust. Be fair and consistent in the rulings that you make. Be sure the PCs are center stage. Uh, NPC classes that are in this book are Commoner, God's Wife of the Great Shepherd, which is like the Magi character. Uh, there's a prestige class called the Knight's Watch Builder and the Magi. Uh, I guess through magic, uh, each spell in this system is a feat. There's not many in the book. Um, the requirements are Wisdom of 15+, plus, 6 ranks in Knowledge Arcana, and you must also possess one of these five talents. Iron Will, Blood of the Dragon, Blood of the First Men, Dreams, or Animal Companion. So again, this is low magic, and I think a, if you wanted to make a low magic D20 game, you could really kind of gut this and use the mechanics and do pretty good for yourself. There's a generic spell template that's, again, a feat. Um, a spells require a wisdom check of DC 25. Now, that's really hard. Um, and also, you have permanent penalties for spell casting each time you cast a spell like ability score damage it's permanent uh, you need a teacher to teach you it it's kind of might remind me of midnight sometimes and how difficult it was to learn magic um, some possible bonuses to that dc25 roll are the level of the character uh, high magical knowledge using prepared instruments ritual sacrifice um, and they can all give bonuses to spell casting depending on how how the gm wants to let it you know, happen. If it's after the birth of the dragons, it might actually be easier. There's a table of modifiers. There's optional nasty rules for potent magic that deals more damage. Uh, talks a little bit about the strange and magical, magical events before the birth of dragons, but uh, there's a lot that happen afterwards. Uh, things like dark omens, true dreams, val valyrian. Valerian, I can't pronounce that word. <laughs> Steel, uh, the strength of blood, prophecy, powers old and dark, and curses. Uh, there's a section about character rewards, about items, allies, non-combat XP, and giving out bonus points. And to reward powerful item, items sparingly. There's a bestiary with uh, Westeros creatures and real world equivalents. Many of the animal stats are not in the book, just use the monster manual. 
And the others and the whites are very interesting on in how they portray them. I thought those were cool. And the map of Westeros on page 343 is just gorgeous. So chapter 15 is the world of the Game of Thrones. It has a very large detailed history. The customs, the laws, the religions, the old gods, the weirwood trees, the new gods, the seven, the drowned god, Mother Roin, which I don't remember that one. Rahuler, or Howler, the Lord of Light. It also goes into knighthood, heraldry, tournaments, maesters, medicine, poison, illness. There's lots of geography descriptions. The list of bannermen and the first book. Uh, this is about the first book, remember, so some of the details from the later books aren't in this. <clears throat> Chapter 16 is NPCs and characters, and a lot of the artwork I've been showing you is from that. Major characters have two pages. Uh, most of them are one page. Some of them are three per page. Um, the fluff is first, and then they go through the stats later. Uh, the Stark Dire Wolves are in there, so that's cool. Um, a lot of these NPCs would make good characters. Again, if you want to skip the character creation part. There's a big list of sample NPCs and stats. There's a nice character name glossary from characters from books. A glossary of D20 terms. A big index and a character sheet. <clears throat> I had to take a little break and come back several times during the, the making of this. I, uh, I realized that if I'm talking straight for a long time, I my throat really starts to kind of hurt and I start coughing and my throat gets dry. It must just be the way I talk. I don't know. Or I just, I'm not used to talking this much. But hopefully you enjoyed all the videos. Hopefully you enjoyed the artwork that I put up there. Uh, I, I just really think this game is gorgeous. The artwork is amazing. The binding on the book is very impressive. I don't know if you noticed when I was laying the book out, it, uh, it laid out very nicely. It seems very sturdy. Um, it's basically made to be a, you know, a, t a, a book at the table while you're playing, not just to sit on the shelf and look pretty. Um, I Reading through this, it was a D20 book, and I'll be honest, I was, I was like, ugh. You know, I'll give it a shot, see what it's like, and you know, I really enjoy the setting, and I'm really glad I did, because I really like a lot of the optional rules that they put in there. I really like that they took out attack of opportunities. That might not be your thing, and that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't, don't mean to insult anybody. It's just I was really excited to see that in there. Uh, I think that's part of the reason why I like some of the old school games. But the setting is amazing. Uh, hopefully, there'll be some more, more, more novels coming out soon from uh, George R. R. Martin. There's supposed to be an HBO series that's coming out, uh, I think, in 2011, so it's kind of cool. don't have HBO, but I'll probably just get it on DVD whenever that happens. But yeah, A Game of Thrones is a very, very dense book. Um, I guess another one of my critiques is that the, the type is pretty small. I think if Tetsubo were to read this, he'd probably have to get his magnifying glass out because the type is pretty small. Maybe 10 points? I don't know. Maybe 9 really don't know how to tell the difference in, uh, in point size, just uh, reading it out of a book. But I, I greatly enjoyed reading this. Um, while I might not use all of the rules, and I'll probably tend toward a rules light approach, I think it's very playable as is. Probably the biggest hardship, I think, for GMs and players would just be get something that's setting, basically, knowledge. And again, if you just read the books and the novels several times and the rules... I think you'd be okay. And if you start out your first game in a Game of Thrones, you can start out light. You don't have to be in a noble house. You can just be, you know, some uh, Brothers of the Night's Watch. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one.